ปวงเลยความหมายของวิดีโอนี้คือจะบอกว่าการใช้ถุงมือที่ใช้ถุงมือที่ใช้ถุงมือที่ใช้The glass prescription coming from the auto refractor to all the different prescriptions that you may have in your inventory system. Here are the features of the glasses inventory program. This is the primary PC, and there's a secondary PC behind the scenes, which I'll show you shortly. I'm going to launch the glasses inventory program. This particular inventory has over 7,000 pairs of glasses in it. There are four quadrants on this inventory program. The top left quadrant is where the prescription comes in from the auto refractor. The top right quadrant is the list of glasses that match that prescription. The bottom right quadrant is all your inventory. Scroll right through it. There's all your inventory. The bottom left quadrant is the list of glasses that you have removed from inventory. Each quadrant has help over it. You can see this white bar over this quadrant. If I click this white bar, the help comes up. If I click here, it zooms in on the help. So you have details of everything that you see on the screen. Top right quadrant. That's details of that information. All the information you could possibly want. Bottom right. There's details of that quadrant. Then bottom left, right here. That's details of that quadrant, which shows the list of glasses that you've handed out. Also, if you look. Every single icon, if you hover over it, will show you details. Like for here, glasses bag number, close as a match from zero to nine, left spear power, left spear power here, every single thing. Sa click to save. Current prescription to file as you want. You could not find an inventory, so save unmatched inventory. Clear, click to clear information from a previous patient. So all over the screen, you'll see. For example, in this column, there's actually four numbers. If you hover over this number right here, it's just the sunglasses column, readers column, progressive column. Bifocal column, and we got gender column. So all these different columns show uh, items or have individual prompts of what, about what they mean. Here's the click to cut back cylinder. These buttons here are normally not so much used now that you use the wizard. Now here are the steps involved in measuring a patient. Then you enter the patient number. This will be patient one. Then you enter the age, 53, and then you transmit a prescription uh, from the auto refractor to the computer. Incoming window pops up. There's prescription, and I got no match. So I'm going to use the wizard. The button is flashing to, in, to let you know. So I click the wizard, and I'm going to follow the instructions. Click to the right of triple star to remove bifocal requirement. Right there. Okay, I got 187. So I got a, a lot of matches that uh, were not bifocal. But I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get some bifocal. So I'll un un uncheck to this. And I'm going to go and follow the step, second step. Adjust left eye tolerance multiplier to higher numbers. See if I can get any matches there at all. 
and I'm not getting any matches. So I'm going to go back to uh, now. The next step is if no match, adjust left eye tolerance multiplier slightly. I got three matches. Let's see if I can get more. I got 231 matches. Okay, but it's sorted by best optical fit. There's four matches there. Exit the wizard. Now see that some are either and they're male. Let's suppose I'd like to have it all male. If I just want to have it all male and no either, I should click the gender selection. Let's say that the lens type I want to have is single vision. I click the single vision selection. Now I've got one single vision selection. That actually is a fairly good match for the prescription. And it's a male pair of glasses. Again, single vision. Okay, so now what I can do is I can just print this one out. I only got one match, but I print it out to hand those people who are doing the fitting. This is going to create a file so I can show you what the print look at, looks like. Normally it would be on the Dymo label writer that's included with the kit. And there it is, 4247. Let's suppose that they decide to hand out 4247. So I click 4247. And now I'm going to click this line right here which is, has navigated to the top, 4247. Click Remove Pair, Refresh Personal List, and you can see now it is gone. Now I'm going to measure another patient. Click Clear, increment the patient number. I'm going to say the age is 45. Okay, I'm going to transmit another another request into the computer. From the autorefractor. There it is. Once again, I did not get a match, but again, I'm going to use the wizard. Triple star to remove bifocal requirement. Adjust. Okay, and I see I got a huge number for remove bifocal requirement. So I thought, I'd like to see if I can get some bifocals. So I'm going to uncheck that. And I'm going to go ahead and take the next step. Adjust left eye tolerance multiplier to higher numbers. See if I can get anything. I'm not getting anything there. I'm not getting anything. Now I'll go to the right eye, which is what it tells me to do. Got 183, so I'll back off a little bit. See if I can get a closer match. So I had to go to a lower tolerance. I've got a lot of matches, and uh, but none of them are bifocals. So I forced it to make a match without bifocals. Okay, so I go ahead in this case, I go ahead and print the prescription out, save it, and I will show you what it looks like. Right here. Okay. And I want to say 682 is my best choice. So I'll pick that one out. 682, I'll put that in right here. And I'm going to remove that pair of glasses from inventory. Now I've removed two. Now I'm going to switch over to the other computer and for a fresh person list on that one. This is a Windows 10 computer. You can see there's the two. Now I'm going to measure some eyes using the secondary computer. Okay, here, first of all, I'm going to enter the eight. The patient number of this is going to be three. And I will say that the patient is uh, 28. And then I'm going to transmit a prescription into the computer. Now this patient requires no add, as you can see here, because 28, they don't, they have enough focusing capability to be able to see up close without having bifocals or progressive. But I need to, to run the wizard, so I click the wizard, follow the instructions, just right eye tolerance multiplier to higher numbers. I 
I got one match. I got two matches. I got 22 matches. So I go ahead with that one. I go ahead and exit the wizard. I'm going to click print. And then I look at the printout, and there it is. Let's suppose I'd like to remove, in this case, I decide I'm going to move pair number 3692. That's after the fitters have had a chance to work with it. So 3692, I want you know, 3692 here. Remove that pair of glasses, and I'm done. Now I'm going to go to the next patient. Click Clear. Patient number four. I'm going to enter the age. Let's say this age is 82. Okay, then I'm going to transmit a prescription in to the computer from the autorefractor. I get this. This time I got three matches right off the bat. And that's, that's a good match. These are all bifocals. Good add. Very good matches. I think I'll increase the number of matches a little bit by using the wizard. I think I'll allow it to stay bifocals and change it just a bit. Here I got nine matches by adjusting the right eye tolerance multiplier, realizing it's always sorted by best optical match. And this first number in this column defines the closest of match indicator. The smaller this number, the most more exact the match. If this were zero, then it would be very it would be an exact match. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and print out this list. And then display it. Oops, wrong one. And there it is. Let's suppose I'm going to remove pair number 12 of inventory. Okay, this is after the fitters have done the fitting. 12. Repair, refresh person list, and there's the two I just finished removing, 12 and 682. If I go back to the other computer, refresh person list, you can see it sees them too. And so therefore, because this is a shared inventory file, the two computers are not going to hand out, uh, you're not going to hand out glasses that's already been hand out, handed out by operators off the second computer. Now I'm going to measure another patient here, so clear. This is going to be patient number five. The age, let's say the age is 53. I'm going to transmit that prescription into the computer. Here's a measurement from the autorefractor coming in. Okay, same situation, similar prescription from the before. Use the wizard. I think I'll remove bifocal requirements up here. That should be the first thing I should have done. Then I'm going to use the wizard and see if I can find a match. I got one. I got two more. One more I should say. Now I got a lot. I'm going to go ahead and exit the wizard. And I think I'm going to filter this a bit and only show mail prescriptions. There, I got three. Click print. And here it is. And I'm going to move pair number 6894. Now, realize this pick list has been held, had handed to the fitters. The fitters decided. Uh, that to remove 6894. So I'm going to go ahead right here, 6894. Remove that pair. Refresh person list. Now I'm going to go back, go to the other computer, and measure a pair from that computer. Clear. This is going to be patient number six. Enter. Uh, age, let's say this person is 
73. Transmitter single re file reading. This is coming from uh, simulated auto refractor. I got three matches. And let's say that's good enough. But I, I'll just go ahead and see if I can get some more. I'm going to run the wizard. And maybe I'd like to have some additional help with the wizard. So I can click here. And this window will pop up. Well, this window will widen, giving you help on the wizard. So I can click it again. It closes it. I'm going to click on this right here to see if I can get more. I widened the tolerance of the right eye, and I got more. Exit the wizard. And let's say this is a female, so I'd like to only the females to show. And that's the female in either. Or I could click this to ex exact to make sure it's all female and no choices of either. Click print. Save. And then I'm going to click on the glasses image. Show that show that pick list that I just came up with. Again, I'm going to, this time I'll remove pair 1987, let's say. I go in and click, click in 987, 1987. I click here, click remove pair, refresh person list. I'm in business. Because now I've removed six pairs. Let's say for the sake of discussion, though, I said, oops, I really didn't mean to remove pair number 1987. I wanted to remove pair 1988. So I click here, and I click return pair, refresh person list. Okay, now if I go to the other computer and do that, refresh personal list, 1987 is gone also. But, so I really want to do 1988, I'll do this one, remove pair, refresh personal list, and I go to the other computer, refresh personal list, and it's there. So there we have removed it and refreshed it. So now I have... Uh, six pairs of glasses that have been removed from inventory. Now I'm back on the primary. Again, step number one, clear. Step number two, enter the patient number. I'm going to make this pair patient number seven. I'm going to enter the age. This patient is going to be 18. Okay, now I want to transmit a prescription in to that uh, computer from the autorefractor. And I got a lot of good matches that are suitable. So now I'll, tr so I'll go ahead and, pr and print that out for the for the fitters. And of course, this is what I'll see. And hand that to the fitters, and I move on to the next patient. Step one, number one, clear. Step number two, patient number eight. This is going to be. 37. Send another prescription in. I got a lot of good matches. Okay, again, I print this out. And this is what I have. Move on to the next patient. Click clear. This is patient number it's age 53, patient number 9. Transmit another prescription in. Got four matches. Go ahead and print that out. And there it is. Okay, now I'm going to do another patient. And this patient is going to be 45 years old. Okay, and now I will transmit that prescription in.
and I got no matches. Now let's say that you try to use the wizard and you don't get any matches still. You can click on Save Unmatched Prescription right here. Just click Yes. And then if you do a Reports Display Measurement Without a Match, that prescription is in there. That way it kind of tells you uh, what you might have been missing from your inventory. Now the bidders come back for this patient right here. That's patient number nine. And they said that we've handed out 4476. So I'll go in, I'll type in 4476. I remove that pair. Refresh personal list. You see it's now gone. I go to the secondary PC. Refresh personal list. It's now gone. So now I have removed seven pairs of glasses from inventory. Okay, now I'm going to measure another patient. And this is going to be patient number, let's say, let's make it number 11. And this is going to be age 62, or 3, make it 2, 62. I'm going to transmit that prescription in, a new prescription in, from the auto factor. Okay, that's, that's what I have that many matches, but I look at the patient and I see that they're blind in the right eye. So I'm going to click here, and I've got a lot more matches. I got 24 matches because I'm only matching one eye versus. If, I don't, if it's not blind, I only have five matches. So that's keep that in mind. If you have a patient that's blind in one eye, make sure you mark that. All right, you can also click on dominant eye right here. And I go into the wizard now. Right eye dominant. That means it's going to say that. And you're going to try to make a close match to the right eye. So click to the right of triple star to remove bifocal requirement. I'll do that. And I went to a lot of matches, A42. Just left eye tolerance multiplier to higher numbers. I got even more matches. So at this point in time, it's going to match always, it's only going to print the top uh, 10 on that list. So click print. And then, there it is. There's the list. In this case, I'm going to remove pair number 711, 711. Refresh person list. Now I've got eight pairs that have been used. I'm going to go to the other PC. Refresh person list. It's those eight used also. When you're trying to learn how to use the program, there's a feature available called Practice Play. If you click Enable, right here, click Help, Enable Disable Practice Play, this little yellow bar appears. If I click Right Arrow, it shows the first patient in the Practice Play inventory file. So I click here, follow the instructions, Right of triple star to move bifocal requirement. I still don't get a match. Adjust left eye tolerance multiplier to higher numbers. I got a match. I got five matches now. So therefore you got a match. But now you're practicing without having an order factor. As if you did have an order factor. So practice play allows you to do that. So let's go to the next one. There's the wizard. Remove bifocal requirement. And now I've got a lot of matches. So practice play is an invaluable feature to allow you to use the program and understand how it works without having an autorefractor. So you can do this even before your trip. 
and understand how it works. Again, you notice how the uh, Dr. Rose's analysis, high astigmatism in both eyes, far-sighted both eyes, glasses are needed. Sometimes, for some unknown reason, you end up with a mismatch between the left, between the primary PC and, and secondary PCs as to the number of pairs been removed. If you look here, this says eight removed. You look on this side, on, on the secondary PC, it says seven removed. If you go back, you can see that 40, back in the primary PC, 4247 is not, uh, is on the primary PC, but not on the secondary PC. And here's how you reconcile it. First of all, you close glasses inventory on both P PCs. Then you go to the primary PC, click on Network Journal, and click on Reconcile Journal, Resync Journals. Click here, here. That says the resync process must be performed on the secondary PC computer first. Okay, so I'm going to go to the secondary computer, open up Network Journal, Resync Journals. Okay, now it says run resync on the primary PC. So I'm going to go back to the primary PC, resync journals. Okay, and now they should be in sync. So I'm going to go ahead and launch the glasses inventory program on the primary PC. We can see 4247 came up. Now I'm going to go to the secondary computer. Launch glasses inventory on the secondary computer, and you see 4247 has come up there. So now the two PCs are in sync because of that special script file. Now I'm going to show you how to update your inventory after you've operated for a period of time. So first of all, here I am on the primary PC. I'm going to do a file. Save deleted rejected inventory right here. You go ahead and exit from Glasses Inventory. Now I'm going to launch Glasses Reader. File Load Deleted and Rejected Inventory from Glasses Inventory Program. Click Open. Now those eight are deleted. I'm going to say Right Sorted Inventory and check for errors. Take it. A little bit of time for this to happen. It's rewriting the inventory 100 records at a time. So now the inventory has been rewritten. I'm going to do a file, create vacancy list file for label generation, and click continue. Now you could change this number if you wanted to. If you wanted to create you wanted to extend your inventory, you could say make it 7,100 and add five more to your to your inventory. But I'll go ahead and click continue. And now I'm going to click on start all programs, classes reader, print update labels with Excel. Excel comes up. Click to print labels for vacancies found in your inventory. Click to prepare the first sheet. Print that one. Right now it's going to be print this the sheet, and we'll look and see what that looks like. All right, now I'm going to go in. This is a file, and there it is. There's the pairs of labels that can go into the bag. And so now what I want to do is I want to update this. So I go ahead and go into barcode OCR data entry and I want to go back to the beginning first of all that's the beginning of my inventory click for barcode OCR capture that window comes up now I'm going to scan in some glasses before I do that I have to uh, scan in the next and I'm going to use a special barcode sheet like you see here. Here's the barcode sheet. 
That's what I'm using. So I'll go ahead and exit that. Now this is always, by the way, whenever you have this barcode sheet up, uh, this behind the scene window is not accessible. Only way you get it accessible is hit hide. So on the barcode sheet, I'm going to scan next. It goes to the first empty location. Then I'm going to scan the right eye. This has to be pair number 12. So I'll put the pair number 12 labels on the bag and on the glasses. Now I scan save. I scan next. Pull in another pair. This one must be labeled 682. Right eye, left eye, scan save, next. This must be labeled 711. Right eye, left eye, save, next. This must be labeled, labeled 1988. Right eye, left eye, save, next. This one must be labeled 3692. Right eye, left eye, save, next. This must be labeled 4247. Right eye, left eye, save, next. This must be, must be labeled 4476. Right eye, left eye, save, Next, this must be labeled 6894. Right eye, left eye, save. Next, this one was that one is 796, but I've gone beyond the end of my inventory, so I need to hide, to hide it. I'm going to right sort it inventory and check for errors. Click continue. It's now rewriting the inventory at the rate of 100 pairs every time. Okay, now the inventory is rewritten. If I do a, a report, vacancy report, it says I have zero vacancies. Now I'm going to transfer that inventory doing a file, transfer inventory to Glasses Inventory Program. Click Continue and then Exit. Now when I launch Glasses Inventory, it shows zero vacancies. Okay, zero used right there. But I need to get that inventory over to the other computer. So I'm going to click, go to the Windows 10 computer. I exit from Glasses Inventory here. And I'm going to go into the Network Journal. And it says Move Network Inventory. Click on that. Any, any character to continue. Launches Glasses Reader, which transfers the prescription over to Glasses Inventory. Now when I launch Glasses Inventory, it also shows zero used. So now you have the two PCs back in sync from where they were before. Now what I want to do now is I'm going to load a previous measurement. So I do a file, load previous auto factor measurements. And I'm going to pick this one right here. And it puts everything in it that was there before. This is a 37-year-old patient. Now, if I go up to a higher higher age and set that, you can see I, I got no matches. I had a lot of matches that were when the when there was no ad associated with that. Now, I want to look. At the, we have buttons other than the wizard, which the wizard is the easiest to use. And of course, if you click here, it gives you instructions on how to use the wizard. Plus, if you launch the wizard, like here, you click Help, and it gives you instructions there how to use it. But anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of these previous buttons that used to be around. I can go and use this button here, and that will say the normal default settings. If you click under Options, the normal default settings is maximum spear overage. If I go to default.2, it says allow up to 2. Max it allows up to 10. So you can see this button right here is moving when I click these right here. But it tells you what that button is doing. Okay, then I have the ability to do uh, cutbacks, cutback and search, 
Left cut back and search. I got nothing. Right cut back and search. I got nothing. So notice it says I set, I've cut back one time. Right cut back and search. Again, nothing. Left cut back and search. Again, nothing. Cut back both and search. Nothing. Right cut back and search. Reset cut back. Reset cut back on this one. Let's go into the wizard to see if I can get a match. Follow the instructions. I got a match when it's not bifocal. So these buttons can be useful, but most of the time people end up using the wizard to find what they need to, to find. So I have this reading that I had no matches, but let's suppose for the sake of discussion that the right eye is actually blind. When I click on that, I didn't get a match, but if I go into the wizard and eliminate bifocal requirement, I get many, many matches, but the right eye is marked as blind. Now, let's suppose that I, instead of that, I say the right eye is dominant eye. Go into the wizard there. Eliminate bifocal. Now you got to got to uh, add back. There's the add. Again, you go to the wizard and said the dominant eye. Follow the instructions. Eliminate this bifocal. Increase the number, the power. I got a, a huge number when I increase the. Uh, uh, Eliminate bifocal and increase the add. If I go back to. So for that bifocal, I got a lot of matches. So taking the dominant eye is really sometimes a very important thing to do. Now I'm going to take a, uh, next another patient. I'm going to make this patient number. Uh, 13, I'll say. I make this patient number patient 59 years old, and I'm going to transmit a script to N. I got a couple couple of matches, but I think I'd like to match by the dominant eye. But how do I identify the dominant eye? I have a YouTube video that's on my website, but I'll just show you show it to you here. How to identify the dominant eye.
and that tells you how the dominant eye can be chosen. And so in this case, I'm going to say the dominant eye is right eye. Run the wizard. And we're going to adjust the tolerance multiplier. And I've increased the number of matches that I have using the wizard. One thing to note is there are many occasions where you will see up arrow units, tens, a hundreds, thousands. So I can, if I up arrow one, I click that check mark there, it goes up by one. This one goes up by 10, this goes up by 100, this goes up by 1,000, this goes up by 10,000. Same thing for age, 10 or 1. You also have the ability on these buttons to go in, go down, increase this, add the cylinder, so up hour, down hour, so all these different options that you have on the screen that you can make use of. Now this is the end of the training video on the use of the, I, the print classes inventory program in a networked environment.